Aside from Pikachu, Charizard is probably the most iconic Pokemon in the franchise. Its base set card was definitely the most sought after at the time, and it cemented itself as a fan favorite because it was one of the original starters that you could use, and Ash had a Charizard in the anime that was pretty badass at times. And though its base set debut is probably its most famous TCG card, there's actually a very long history of Charizard cards, so let's get into it. This card is fully representative of the entire history of Charizard cards, so it's a great start. To describe Charizard's history in the TCG, I would use three words. Pretty, expensive, and also outclassed by every other fire type around it, basically. Even the base set one, even though it had high HP, had a high damage attack, it was still outclassed by nine tails of the same set. And going forward from here, Charizard never really had a chance to shine. Once Neo came out, it was completely outclassed by Typhlosions. And then every time there was a new fire starter, all the way up to Heart Gold Soul Silver, it was still getting outclassed by Typhlosion. But also your Infernapes and your Blazikins throughout the years. Typically, the price of a card is reflected in not only its rarity, but its usability in whatever format is active. So whatever card is most usable in the metagame is usually a lot more expensive. But I think Wizards of the Coast and then later the Pokemon Company realized that when it comes to Charizard, it's such a fan favorite, such an iconic Pokemon that as long as the card's pretty, people are going to pay more money for it regardless of if it's usable or not. So those are just a few things to keep in mind as we go through all of these Charizard cards. But let's get into this one in particular. It has a really great ability. And Fire Spin, with the help of a couple of plus powers, could Oko anything in the format. It's just too bad it you know, takes at least four turns to set up. And it's a stage two. Not to mention that the biggest tech at the time was Blastoise, which could absolutely destroy Charizard. And this card didn't really have any good partners. There weren't any other big fire types at the time. Fossil Magmar was alright, but they didn't really play off of each other very well. And strangely enough, Charizard had the most synergy with base set Venusaur. Because you could move energy around and anything attached to Charizard was going to be fire. So, that's about it. And next we have Dark Charizard from the Rocket set. So, in the base set era... Every kid wanted to get a first edition holographic Charizard. That was the holy grail. And then I remember when the rocket set hit and there was a new Charizard on the block, everybody immediately shifted their attention to try to get one of these things. Unfortunately, it's very similar in that it has a very high damaging attack. It's got super cool art. I absolutely love the art on this card, but in the main scheme of things, it wasn't very useful because, again, it's still weak to water. Blastoise was still a huge Pokemon at the time. And this is a stage 2 that only has 80 HP. And you could run some fun gimmicky decks with it. I actually have a Dark Charizard deck up on the channel right now if you want to check that out. But really that 80 HP killed it. I know that was a theme amongst all Dark Pokemon in this set. But if it would have kept that 100 or 120 HP, this could have been a great card. Gym Challenge brought us Blaine's Charizard, which... Bumped it back up to 100 HP, gave it two attacks for low energy, so things are looking pretty good. Roaring Flames does have a mistake uh, in the card description. It says discard all fighting energy. That was later errated. But the main problem with this card is there was a Blaine's Arcanine. That was a much better fire type and had really good synergy with a lot of other cards. So Blaine's Charizard wasn't used all that much. However, there was a deck that utilized it. It just wasn't the main focus, uh, and that's because Blaine's Charmander had the Kindle attack, which was very useful in discarding energy off of your opponent early game, which made it really hard for them to set up any kind of big attack. So using Charmander's Kindle attack to discard energy off of your opponent, and also using Moltres to try to mill some of the energy out of their deck, evolving into Blaine's Charizard was more of a last resort for if you actually did need to deal a high amount of damage for only one energy, since Charmander would also be discarding energy off of itself. And this deck did see a resurgence in the expanded Neo format, where you could pair it with the Parasect from Neo Revelation, which basically shut down Feraligator at the time, so this deck was actually a little more viable. And here we have Shining Charizard, which all of the Shining cards were basically useless out of this set, which was Neo Destiny, but they looked very pretty and they were ultra rare, so they were highly collectible. Again, Charizard, it's a very pretty card. It's also a very expensive card. Getting yourself one of these bad boys could cost you around $250, so 
God forbid you ever want to use it in a deck. And if you want to spring for the first edition, it'll be upwards of $1,000. Other than being rare, this card doesn't really have any merits. Yes, it has 100 HP for a basic, which is really cool, and the attack can deal 100 damage, but you're also having to discard 2 energy every time you use it, and you could hurt yourself, so it's not in any way usable, really. Expedition Charizard is in the opposite boat. I think that the art is ugly as shit. However, this was a highly used deck at the time. It was paired with Venusaur from the same set. With Venusaur's Harvest Bounty, you can start using Scorching Whirlwinds as soon as you can evolve into Charizard, and you're going to be consistently dealing 120 damage every other turn meaning that you're going to be okoing anything in format and doing it consistently. So it's no wonder that this deck was at the top of the format. But much like the Shining Charizard from a couple of sets ago, the Sky Ridge Crystal Charizard had attacks that just were not plausibly useful in any game. So the Crystal cards are actually very beautiful. They're really nice cards, especially if you look at them in person. But this Crystal type made them whatever type... Um, of the last energy that you attach to them. So they did have some variability in picking out the weaknesses for your opponent, but really they just required so many different types of energy and so much energy that they were not useful at all. And being a stage two card and having a retreat cost of four just really put several nails in this coffin. This is the last set that Wizards of the Coast produced under their name, so I really think this is a last ditch kind of cash in trying to get these really expensive ultra rare cards to sell before those rights went over to the Pokemon company. Charizard from the EX Dragon set is a solid decent card. It's not great in any respect, but it would make a really great pre-release tournament card or even a starter deck uh, evolution card to have in there. You know, Collect Fire and Flame Pillar do have a little bit of synergy with each other, but nothing too fast that's going to make it astounding in the metagame or anything. Fire Red and Leaf Green brought us the first Charizard EX, which is a huge callback to base set Charizard. Its ability is almost identical to that of its base set counterpart, and it has a high energy, high damaging attack with Burn Down. However, this card shares another similarity with its base set counterpart in that it gets completely destroyed by Blastoise from the same set. Blastoise EX was used in a ton of decks. Charizard EX has two weaknesses to both water and electric, so it's not going to stand a chance against anything, especially when it's taking so long to set up an attack that just deals 200 damage. So again, it's pretty, it's expensive, and it's outclassed. And here we have the Delta Species Charizard from Crystal Guardians. I remember at the time opening so many Crystal Guardians packs and getting these. It was fully holographic, so it looked really nice. It's got some cool art on it. And I always thought it you know, would be great to build a deck around this thing. I already have so many of them, but I can never quite make it work. Mainly because there were no basic metal energy yet. So whenever you use Metal Burn, you were getting rid of two metal energy. And you can only run four in your deck. So even if there was a way to get them back into your deck, you could use that Peel of Thunder to reasonably set up Metal Burn consistently, but if you didn't have a way to consistently get the Metal Energy back into your deck, then this card just wasn't great. Similarly, let's look at the Charizard Delta Star from Dragon Frontiers. This is another ultra rare card, and again, look at that Dark Swirl attack. A lot of energy, a lot of damage. But again, this is a time before there were basic dark energy, so you're going to have to lay down four special energy cards on this thing just to use that attack. Rotating Claws could help you get those darkness energies out of your discard and back onto Charizard. However, you know, being a basic with 90 HP in this format was only decent, really. And you got a weakness to water, high retreat costs. This card just isn't really going to be useful in any way. But... That's some really great artwork. It's just too bad that if you did want to use this thing in a deck, you were going to have to shell out hundreds of dollars. So again, this is a card that was really just sold on its rarity and not usability at all. Power Keeper's Charizard is another card that I would get as my rare in a ton of packs. I think that it looked pretty cool. Uh, it wasn't an EX, so at the time, you know, it was kind of trendy to use those in a deck. That way you're not losing two prizes. It's just not all that great. It's a middle-of-the-road card built more for pre-release tournaments and starter decks. And honestly, that's about all I have to say about it. 
In a similar vein, we have the Secret Wonders Charizard, which again, very middle of the road card. And not to mention that it was completely outclassed by Infernape, who had two great attacks and could fit into almost any deck that had fire energy. I know that in my area, at least, there was a deck with Infernape and two versions of Delcaddy that we called Captain Obvious because they had so much obvious synergy together. You could use Energy Draw, Constrain, and Upstream to just get a ton of fire energy in your discard, which are going to be there anyway after you use Flare Blitz over and over and are dealing 90 damage for just two energy. That was great for the Diamond and Pearl era. And then you could swap in Delcaddy and use that upstream attack for huge damage later in the game and then get all of those energy right back into your deck, which could help you switch back into Infernape and deal 90 damage more consistently. And that's kind of a long-winded version of saying that the, all the Charizard cards that were produced through Ruby and Sapphire and through the Diamond and Pearl areas were completely outclassed by Blazikens and Infernapes. Because even later in Diamond and Pearl, you got another Infernape that was great with an Infernape level X card, which was also great. So Charizard never really had a place in either of those generations. So much so that the Stormfront Charizard was just an obvious cash grab. They made it an ultra rare so that you'd have to buy a ton of packs to drive the price up really just playing off of people's nostalgia because they just redid the art of the base set Charizard card, which I think is much worse than the original card. And then, you know, they pretty much just gave it the same ability and the same attack, just updated so that it could be used in the current format for when it was released. But at the same time, it wasn't usable in the format that it was released. Again, it was just outclassed by so many other fire type cards. And it didn't help that all three stages of the evolution were ultra rares with the updated art and attacks. So uh, I know that right now the Charmanders and Charmeleons go for about $12 each while the Charizard goes for about $40. So even now if you were wanting to use these guys in a deck it'd be really expensive for very lackluster cards. Supreme Victor's Charizard had two very lackluster attacks, but it was forgivable because it was a Team Galactic card, and so it had 100 HP for a basic, and it was obviously just a stepping stone for the Team Galactic Charizard level X. This card sticks with the Charizard formula of having a very good power that could get energy onto Charizard or change the energy and a high energy, high damage attack. However, what the level X card had going for it is that it could also use moves from the original Charizard basic card. So while you were waiting on repowering that malevolent fire attack, you could use Heat Blast and Flame Jet as well. But per the huge Charizard level X was outclassed by another fire starter that was around at the same time. Not to mention that it was completely outclassed as a level X more generally, by prominent cards like Garchomp level X, Rayquaza level X, and Electivire level X. Although the Arceus Charizard was kind of relegated back to being just a decent uh, pre-release card, I do think it's a major improvement for Charizard cards in general. Because the energy curve is much better, you get an attack for one energy so that you can set up those burning tails more easily. And also, you're not having to load Charizard with 5 energy just to get high damage off. Plus, 140 HP is high for a Charizard, so I think this is a step in the right direction, even though it wasn't amazing. But a step back in the wrong direction, I would say, is with this Charizard, which it did get a bump in HP. But it's back to having attacks that have such a high energy curve that they're not even usable. And this card was reprinted twice. So, it shows up in Boundaries Crossed, Plasma Storm, and Legendary Treasures all with different artwork by three different artists, and this to me again just seems like a big cash grab. They know people want Charizard cards, so here's three of them. It doesn't matter what their attacks are. Oh, the shiny Charizard even has a misprint on it to where it's a fighting energy instead of a fire energy. That'll make it rare, huh? And then with the X and Y sets, Charizard got another EX, two EXs actually, and two Megas. So, oh man, let's see how hard they milked Charizard for this one. The Stoke Fire Blast Charizard is clearly the better of the two, so that's the one we'll focus on. Stoke lets you get basic energy cards onto Charizard, that way you can use Fire Blast much more readily, and you're only having to discard one energy card every time you use it, which is a step up from Charizard, and again you have that boost in HP as well. 
Not to mention that Charizard EX was a basic with 180 HP, so that was fantastic. And you also had support for one of the first times from a trainer card in Blacksmith. Blacksmith was great for supporting this card and actually making it usable in the format. And as far as the milking goes, there are three other versions of the Stoke Fire Blast Charizard EX. One of them is Ultra Rare Full Art, and the other two are Alternate Art Promo Cards. And then we have the Megas from Flashfire to talk about, one of which is a Dragon type with 230 HP and an absolutely unusable attack, the other being a Fire type with 220 HP with a completely unusable attack. Having to build up 5 energy, especially in this format, once X and Y hit, speedy decks were the mainstays. Even with support from Blacksmith and using Stoke on Charizard EX, these two cards were just a waste, especially since there was no Spirit Link for Charizard yet, so you were wasting an entire turn just evolving into these Megas. With Generations, they got another Charizard EX, which I think is even better than the Stoke one, because Flame Cloak is dealing damage and you get a guaranteed fire energy. You don't have to flip a coin, and you're not having to discard energy to get off your larger attack. And the Generations Mega is so much better than the other two. Heat Typhoon has four energy for its cost, which is still way more manageable than five, and you're still going to be dealing enough damage to Oko pretty much anything in this format without having to discard energy and without dealing damage to yourself. With even more support coming from the Charizard Spirit Link that was finally printed in the Evolution set, but at this point coming a little too late because at this point in the format there were more preferable Megas to use that were much more powerful, and EXs were on their way out, making room more for GXs, and then you still had stuff like Garbodor that was a basic that could completely lock down decks without the need for any EXs. And just as a quick mention, we also got this Charizard from the Generation set, which has some pretty cool art when seen in the context of the entire Evolution line. And this was a kind of trend for the time for the Plasma sets and also Generations, where you would have these continuing kind of little mini stories throughout the art. So that's another little noteworthy thing we got out of this Charizard, at least. With the Burning Shadows expansion, Charizard got its first GX card, which put it back to being a Stage 2, which was different from an EX, but it still has the same problems as most other Charizard cards. Those two attacks just require way too much energy. Crimson Storm is still dealing 300 damage, which is way too much. It's overkill. You don't really need to do 300 damage, especially at the cost of discarding 3 fire energy. And Raging Out GX is pretty good, but you can only use it once, so milling 10 cards off of your opponent's deck isn't even as bad as it sounds because the X and Y formats just had so many supporter cards in them that could get things out of your discard and put them back into your deck or your hand. So ultimately this card was just a filler GX that just gave people another rainbow rare to search for. The Dragon Majesty Charizard was actually a little bit unique in that it was more of a tech card. It wasn't meant to be the center of a deck. It wasn't meant to deal extreme damage for high amounts of energy. It was more of just kind of like a, a tech card that you could put in against decks that relied heavily on GX and EX Pokemon, which was becoming a bigger and bigger thing. You would see decks that were completely GX Pokemon, both support and as your main attacker. So... Having this Charizard as an option in like smaller decks that didn't use GXs could be a real plus. Although having had played in this format recently, I don't recall ever seeing this card. There were other anti-GX cards that were basics, so you could throw them straight onto your bench and that actually worked out better. So having a stage 2 with this effect really hurt it. A little late to the party, we got another Charizard EX that came out as an XY promo. This one is a little bit different. It was kind of meant more for a collector's item. You could get it in a set that had a jumbo card version as well as this one. Uh, and it had that Mega Ascension attack, which is really unique and pretty interesting. So if you had a way to get the Spirit Link in your hand, you could use Mega Ascension to get the Mega out of your deck and have it ready to go next turn. But also remembering that this is after GXs had become the new powerhouse in the TCG, so... People had completely forgotten about EXs and Megas at this point. Now we can look to the future of Charizard, and the upcoming Charizard to be released in the team-up set is actually counter to everything I'd been saying about Charizard cards throughout this video. It doesn't have a high-cost energy attack, even though it is dealing a lot of damage. 
you know, the art is good, but it's not like overly prettified with hollow foils and EXs and GX labels. And also, it's not going to be expensive. This card is actually going to be in one of the team up theme decks. And this time around, they're doing nostalgia right. They're not just calling back to the same old base set Charizard that everybody wanted back in the day. This one's a callback to Dark Charizard from the Team Rocket set. If you go back and look at that continuous fireball attack, this is a great homage to that. And what a fun ability you have in Roaring Resolve. In exchange for just putting two damage counters on yourself, you can deal an extra 100 damage that turn. And if you include just your free energy that turn, that's like an extra 150 damage, which is really great. Just the fact that this is in a starter deck really makes me look forward to this set releasing on the online version so that I can try it out there. And that's the history of Charizard and the TCG up until this point. Let me know down in those comments what you thought about it, if I missed anything, and I guess look forward to the next one, which is going to be Blastoise. So until then, guys, bye.